In this video, we will examine in depth the current state of the economies of the United States and China. But first, we'll take a look back at the history of the monetary system of the United States. After the nation's founding, the Coinage Act of 1792 established the dollar as a basic unit of currency. According to the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, no state in the Union should make anything but gold and silver coin a legal tender. Under the Act, dollar coins were to contain 24.1 grams of pure silver, and $10 eagle coins were to contain 16 grams of pure gold. This gave a 15 to 1 silver to gold ratio, which was updated in 1834 to 16 to 1. From 1873 to 1900, the nation slowly switched to a gold-only backed currency. Toward the end of World War II, the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944 tied world nations' exchange rates to the U.S. dollar, making it the world's reserve currency. Fast forward to 1971. President Richard Nixon ends the redeemability of U.S. Federal Reserve notes for gold. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. The U.S. was then officially on a fiat money system, dragging the rest of the world with it. In this year, the GDP of the People's Republic of China measured 98.5 billion U.S. dollars. Starting in 1978, economic reforms in China created a more capitalist-style market, spurring incredible GDP growth, reaching 488 billion in U.S. dollars by 1992. In contrast, U.S. GDP in 1992 was roughly 13 times that of China's GDP. From 1978 to 2010, the Chinese economy grew an average of 9.5% each year. This closed the gap in ratio to U.S. GDP, which was now only 2.5 times that of China's. Yeah. At this rate, China is set to overtake the United States economy by 2025, 2018, how about 2012? All Americans should know about the ever-disappearing manufacturing base of the U.S. So-called free trade agreements, NAFTA and GATT, are now blamed for the great loss of jobs in the United States. In the first 30 months of NAFTA, the U.S. went from a $3 billion trade surplus to Mexico to a $23.3 billion trade deficit. From 2002 to 2006, the United States lost 1.4 million manufacturing jobs, while China gained 10.1 million. For better perspective, China's population in 2000 was 1 billion 265 million, whereas the U.S. had 281 million 422,000 people. This makes their population four and a half times that of the U.S., but they are gaining nearly ten times as many manufacturing jobs as we are losing. Additionally, China is almost the biggest holder of U.S. debt, second only to the Federal Reserve. China is estimated to hold over one trillion of our debt as of February 2011. This definitely does not sound like a good trend for the United States. But what does China think about it? <laughs> Is this our fate? Are the Chinese smarter or more hardworking than Americans? Like such a or do such things as excessive business regulations in the U.S. have something to do with this trend? A study submitted September 2009 by Varshney and Associates, written by two PhD professors of CSU Sacramento, states that the total cost of regulations in the state of California is $492.994 billion. Perhaps less regulations would have helped to gain more tax revenue for that 2010 budget deficit of $19 billion, eh, Arnie? A significant chunk of California's business regulations are emissions related. Last year, Californians voted down Prop 23, which would have taken away some effectiveness of 2006's AB 32, the Global Warming Solutions Act of 2006. Give me a break. It's normal for temperatures to vary. There's no great global warming to be worried about. 
What we should be worried about in the U.S. is not having enough energy for our homes. Obama wants to bankrupt anyone building coal power plants when coal power represents 44% of America's energy source. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. In early 2011, inclement weather helped to cause power outages in states such as Texas, which led to shortages in natural gas from Texas to New Mexico, Arizona, and California. So the U.S. is discouraging new power plants when we're reaching the capacity of our current ones? Let's look at how China is handling their energy. The New York Times reports that China has emerged in the past two years as the world's leading builder of more efficient, less polluting coal power plants, mastering the technology and driving down the cost. The article goes on to mention U.S. restrictions for a type of coal power plant that is not restricted in China. And they're not just working with coal. In 2010, China became the top world manufacturer of solar panels. These Chinese seem to like renewable energy. They also seem to like gold. I love gold! The Wall Street Journal thinks that one big reason for the large rally in gold at the end of 2010 could be due to huge buying from China. China just started their first gold-backed exchange-traded fund earlier this year, after China outputted a record 340.88 tons of gold in 2010. In 2007, Chinese gold output outpaced the United States by 36 tons, 1,265,000 ounces. Gold price rose about 25% in 2010, reaching all-time highs in December. Silver, however, gained a massive 79% increase in price last year. Already in February this year, silver jumped to new 31-year highs, reaching $32.86, more than twice the lowest price of silver during 2010. Ever-increasing demand for use in latest technology keeps this commodity supply very low. China is now the world's largest silver producer and consumer. In 2010, China's net imports of silver increased 15% and their exports decreased 60%, showing China's future trend to hoard silver. If there was a catastrophic collapse of the global financial system, China would not be in the worst position with their large precious metals production and supply. Can we say the same for Americans? Does the average American know the pieces of paper inside their wallet are backed by debt and that they should really own a commodity worth value? China is on the right path where we are on the wrong one. We see ads asking us to sell our scrap gold. With gold at an all-time high, now's the time to send your unwanted gold for cash. China is encouraging its citizens to buy gold. Food prices and other commodity prices are increasing, but this is not a result of supply and demand, as an example. There aren't less bananas being produced or more being commanded. The reason why bananas cost more is because there are ever-increasing amounts of U.S. dollars being printed, whether on paper or digitally in a computer system. China is seeing rampant inflation in their money supply. Chinese citizens are wondering how they will continue to afford to buy produce when staples like green peppers and carrots have tripled or quadrupled in price. As China keeps its exchange pegged to the U.S. dollar, they will continue to see this high inflation. That has been changing as China and Russia have recently announced that they will trade in their respective currencies instead of the U.S. dollar. If this policy spreads throughout the world, the U.S. with its current policies may not be a first world nation for much longer. Americans should prepare themselves for the coming crisis never seen before. We're digging a hole of debt that we'll never get out of. Please stop digging. Please save storable food and invest in real money or commodities such as gold and silver if you are serious about having a future for you and your children. Visit futuremoneytrends.com for our most recent list of food storage companies and current articles regarding the coming crisis. Trace of consciousness. Trace of consciousness.